Hello, welcome to McDonald's. May I take your order, please? Okay, we know McD's isn't serving up kale burgers or the like. We know what we're getting into when we order a Big Mac. But here are 10 McDonald's items you should never order under any circumstances. The Shamrock Shake. AKA The Rock, AKA La Roca. It's understood that the green goodness of a shamrock shake won't be as healthy as a green goddess salad, but this neon beverage is a particularly severe offender. McD's first introduced the shamrock shake back in 1970. After three years of playing with the combinations, it transitioned into the now familiar vanilla shake with green food coloring and added the now famous touch of mint flavor to match that incredible Hulk colored aesthetic. Over the years, McDonald's used more than one cartoon green character to push sales of the shake, like Grimace's Irish relative Uncle O'Grimacy in the 1980s, or the tie-in with the 2007 movie Shrek the Third, called the Minty Mud Bath Shake, that piggybacked on the original mint taste and added a chocolate twist. Who is that tasty snack? There have been other variations besides the promo with everyone's favorite ogre, like the 1980s Shamrock Sunday, which featured shamrock syrup instead of the traditional caramel fudge or strawberry sauces. Or the 2017 Shamrock line of beverages that put that famous minty blast in everything, from a shamrock mocha to a shamrock hot chocolate and a shamrock chocolate chip frappe. Here's your hot chocolate, Blue. Today, the OG Shamrock Shake makes its return every February and March and continues to be a big seller at locations across the country. It even gets a seasonal run in its namesake country of Ireland. However, its massive popularity conveniently overshadows its massive calorie count. Even with the luck of the Irish, you'll need a calculator to add up all the nutrition facts listed for this emerald dessert. The 16-ounce medium Shamrock Shake packs almost three and a half ounces of sugar. That's like half a cup of sugar in a single sitting. On top of that, the 680 total calories will pack more punch than a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. At least since it's only sold two months a year, we get a break from this seasonal sugar snack, whether we want one or not. Hotcakes in any combination. We'll take a uh, hotcakes and sausage. Uh, sorry, sir, we stopped serving breakfast. They say breakfast is the most important meal of the day, but it's important to avoid this one to keep your cholesterol down. McDonald's hotcakes come in a variety of breakfast combinations with different sides, but the biggest criminal for carbs, calories, and cholesterol is the big breakfast with hotcakes. This morning monstrosity consists of three hotcakes, scrambled eggs, a biscuit, hash browns, and a sausage patty, and comes with syrup and whipped salted butter in addition to the clarified butter and salted but are used in the assembly of the whole thing. So can I have the syrup now? It comes in at 1,340 calories, which is enough to fill the recommended daily intake for all three meals of the day. It also exceeds the recommended daily intake for saturated fats. In the face of all that, it makes sense to simplify the meal, but that isn't much help either. An order of hotcakes with a sausage patty on the side comes in just shy of 800 calories in its own right. The sausage patty itself consists of 25 ounces of sodium, but removing it from the equation still doesn't make it a healthy start to the day. The basic combination of hotcakes with syrup and butter is the most stripped-down version you can get, but still doesn't strip down the carb count. It still contains over three and a half ounces of carbs, along with a full day's allotment of sugar. All things considered, maybe hotcakes are the one thing that shouldn't be selling like hotcakes. The McFlurry I believe scooping ice cream with an ungloved trunk is a class 3 health code violation. This next item doesn't quite have the storied history of the shamrock shake, but has made up for lost time with its questionably high calorie count. The McFlurry has been around for just over two decades, first seen national release back in 1998. The concept was a creation of McDonald's franchisee Ron McLellan in New Brunswick, Canada, and needed three years of development before hitting the market. Maybe that high-tech spoon and the hole in the top needed a lot of research and development. The sweet treat has seen a few variations of toppings since its inception, but the original five were Butterfinger, Oreo, Nestle Crunch, Heath, and the Everpuff. 
popular M&Ms. But as popular as the McFlurry has become, the idea of adding those sugary toppings to an already sugary soft serve isn't the best combination for anybody's waistline. And the M&M's McFlurry seems to be the worst culprit of all the available candy additions. The 10-ounce regular size carries 640 calories. A quarter pounder with cheese and bacon doesn't even have that many calories. And the sandwich might be the better choice, since it would at least fill you up longer. The big kicker for your ticker is the sugar content of the concoction, which is nearly three ounces of sugar per serving. You'd need to knock back over a half a dozen of McDonald's baked apple pies to get that same amount of sugar fix, which is near twice the amount of the recommended recommended daily sugar intake suggested by the Food and Drug Administration. Maybe next time, consider sticking with the snack-sized serving of this spoon-spun sweet. New to Babbletop? Then how about hitting that subscribe button? thanks. Now more McD's. Sausage Breakfast Sandwiches Not bad. Matter of fact, it's the best burger I've had in years. Hotcakes aren't the only thing responsible for turning the first meal of the day into a disaster. The handhelds from the McDonald's morning menu also have their fair share of offenders. As we know, the sausage patty's high sodium count makes it a salty situation to avoid starting the day with. So it's just as bad to add to breakfast sandwiches as it is to something like hotcakes. Take, for example, the sausage biscuit with egg. In addition to those 25 ounces of sodium, the sandwich as a whole carries 530 30 calories, which would make a single sausage patty sandwich equivalent to the calorie count of a small chocolate shake. To keep it in a meat perspective, one patty contains as much salt, calories, fat, and carbs as four whole bratwurst links. Switching it over to a sausage McMuffin with egg doesn't put much of a dent in it, as that breakfast sandwich only has around 50 fewer calories after switching to the English muffin instead of the biscuit. No matter the bread choice, it looks like the best course of action is to swap out that sausage patty. World Famous Fries You just soaked it in grease. Very wobbly. If the nutrition numbers have scared you away from breakfast, maybe the best option is to stick with a snack. Perhaps a crispy golden side order of McDonald's classic fries would be the best option by avoiding all those questionable sweets and meats. The problem with that strategy is McD's famous fries are no safe haven for the health conscious either. Starting at the top, a large order of fries with your meal carries 500 calories by itself, which is more than a large order of fries from Wendy's and from Burger King. That's not only more calories than the competition, it's more calories than McDonald's own double cheeseburger. Drop it down to a medium to cut the count to 340 calories, or the small fries worth 200. 120. Or the safest bet of all, ditch the deep fried spuds altogether. Nick D's Shakes. This drink, I like it. I know, it's great, right? Another! Well-known ice cream treats like the McFlurry and the Shamrock Shake aren't the only dessert item that would get double takes from a dietitian. In fact, the original McDonald's dessert is right up there with them. Shakes. And no, that's not shorthand for milkshakes, it's their technical and official title. This is due to a system of dairy regulations that started in 1924, called the Pasteurized Milk Ordinance, and it regulates milk and milk products all across the United States. However, some states haven't adopted the system and have some pretty tricky definitions of what constitutes a milk product. I see you're drinking 1%. Is that because you think you're fat? So depending on where you are, state dairy laws will play a hand in what is or isn't classified as dairy. Everything from sour cream to sherbet to frozen yogurt may or may not go by their traditional names. So to simplify things, McDonald's just drops the milk name entirely. But even if there's still technically milk-based reduced fat soft serve in a non-milkshake, it doesn't make it any less of a strain on your digestive system. A large chocolate shake carries four ounces of sugar and 830 calories. And cutting back to the small isn't much better. A small chocolate shake still packs 520 calories, which is nearly twice as many calories as a double cheeseburger has, and nearly as much sugar as a half dozen Dunkin' Donuts. 
To put that all in perspective, a small Frosty at Wendy's only carries 340 calories, and a small Slurpee at 7-Eleven only 100. The best option if you're starving for a shake is to stick with vanilla. A small size has about 40 fewer calories than chocolate and half an ounce less sugar. Either way, you'll really have to shake it at the gym to work it off. The Bacon, Egg, and Cheese McGriddle they get it from smugglers. Guess not you guys. There are a couple of options for swapping out that sausage sodium explosion on your breakfast sandwich, but it doesn't mean they're necessarily much better. You could always go for the classic ham from the Egg McMuffin, but the tastiest and most tempting option has got to be bacon. And if you really want to ratchet things up, it has got to be on a McGriddle. These salty, sweet hotcake handhelds were introduced back in 2003, and the standard McGriddle carries the aforementioned bacon as well as a slice of American cheese and a scrambled egg flap, all sandwiched between a pair of griddle cakes. When the world finally got its wish for all-day breakfast back in 2015, McGriddles were left off the options at first. But after a year of outcry, they were added on, and now there are no hourly restrictions on when to indulge in this McDelight. While bacon is a slightly better breakfast meat option than sausage, two strips still contain 140 calories and are more grease than meat, since they average in at 63% fat per strip. All told, a bacon, egg, and cheese McGriddle carries 430 calories and 25 ounces of sodium, and isn't the best way to jumpstart your day. McCafe Frappes Whew, it's like, uh, Jesus washed my tongue. The Golden Arches began aggressively expanding its North American coffee footprint in the 2010s, making its originally Australia-based McCafe coffee line a priority piece of its global brand. Moderate coffee consumption is touted as having several health benefits, like lowering the risks of depression, heart disease, liver cancer, type 2 diabetes, and even Parkinson's disease. But the java being sold at Mickey D's still suffers from the same issues as the other questionable menu items, and in actuality, might do the opposite of prevention in some of those departments. The biggest bad guy of the lot is the McCafe Caramel Frappe, which is a blended beverage of coffee, caramel flavoring, whipped cream, and caramel drizzle. The large size clocks in at a staggering 670 calories, tag-teaming with nearly 100 carbs and 100 grams of sugar. Even stepping down to the medium size is still north of 500 calories. Altogether, it's it's more sugar than caffeine and is one of the worst options for a McDonald's morning pick-me-up. Mix Salads Chunky chicken salad. Look, man, could you just give me my damn burger, I McDonald's first placed salads on their menu back in 1987, perhaps to ease the guilty conscience of everything else they sell. While vegetables might not be the first thing customers think of at a burger joint, these particular salads didn't stray far from their meaty brethren when it comes to the health department. Because they were paired with crispy or grilled chicken and a salt-packed dressing, the green goodness drowned in the usual McDonald's fare. Most of the salads served over the three decades since they debuted approach or surpassed the 500 calorie mark and included half of the daily recommended sodium count. In an ironic twist, customers also felt inclined to cheat with side dishes after eating a quote unquote healthier option and would pair the salad with a soda or dessert, unknowingly making things even worse. The good news about all this? McDonald's finally realized nobody goes there to eat a salad and as of June 2022, officially discontinued their salad line. Soda. One soda. Twelve ounces. Fifty cent! One thing you'll never see discontinued at the Golden Arches is the icy, cool, carbonated drinks you wash everything down with. Coca-Cola and McDonald's have held close ties since 1955, teaming up to dominate the fast food scene through their classic combination of hot burgers and cool beverages. But any other drink might be better than a soda, because that sugary sweetness carries a scary side. Even moderate soda consumption has been shown to cause chronic health issues, starting with obesity and diabetes and working up to high blood pressure, heart disease, and high cholesterol. A large fountain soda rings in at 290 calories and 28 grams of carbs. So whether it's an ice-cold Coke or that fountain Sprite that just hits different, avoid it and try hitting up an ice water to cool that calorie count. 
Check out more great videos. Just tap or click, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell.